Hello again, everybody. I'm Snapper Lancaster, and welcome you to another edition of the Central Alabama High School Sports Show. As you can tell, we're in unfamiliar surroundings. We're not at home at Sawyer Trail in Hoover like we usually are, but tonight we're visiting with our corporate sponsors with Andrew Sports Medicine and Orthopedic Centers, and we'll be visiting with some of the doctors. We do this once a year. Uh, they're good enough to help us stay on the air, and we uh, in return, we try to recognize the doctors whenever we get a chance, so we'll be visiting with uh, four of their doctors tonight, and so I'm sure you'll enjoy all the information that they'll have to give you about a whole plethora of injuries and, and how to avoid rehab and, and everything lies straight ahead. First of all, you know, this is a very important part of the high school season. Playoffs are, are going on. Right now, baseball is very active. Softball is fixing to start. We've got... Uh, soccer that's having their tournaments. You got boys and girls uh, athletes in golf and tennis and track and so just a very busy time of the year. Matter of fact, we've got three teams uh, that are still very active in the baseball playoffs from the Birmingham area in Class 7A. The uh, Hewitt Trustful Huskies will be playing James Clements uh, this coming weekend with a chance to adv advance further into the playoffs. Uh, this is there into the second round already. And we've got uh, uh, 6A, one of the top teams right now are the Homewood Patriots who will be playing Coleman this upcoming weekend. And Mortimer Jordan from here in the Birmingham area in Class 5A, still very active in the baseball playoffs. We've often talked about this busiest time of the season and so there's a lot of uh, coaches and kids, and we try to recognize as many as we possibly can. Always remember, folks, the fr frequent our sponsors, because without their help, we would not be able to bring the show to you. So tonight, we're looking forward to our uh, interviews and our visits with the doctors. That's straight ahead. Don't you go away. We'll be right back. The community features a world-class resort and spa, the amazing Robert Trent Jones Trail Golf Course, miles of historic trails, and the whole family loves the pool at Ross Park. Now, oh, are we gonna have to watch your vacation slides all night? This was supposed to be a party. Well, this isn't my vacation. I live here. Ooh. The next time you need electrical work, whether it be commercial or residential, you need to call Huffman Electrical Contractors. A company that's been in business for over 35 years, they've served clients not only locally in the Birmingham area and all over the state, but have clients outside the state of Alabama as well. Whether it's a new building or remodeling an older building or home, they can handle the job for you. Once again, that's Huffman Electrical Contractors. The number to call is 205-661-5005. That's 205-661-5005, where at Huffman Electrical Contractors, a satisfied customer is always their number one objective. Take your taste to a different place It's the taste of hamburger heaven A taste of heaven is always best Now you know that you're blessed Give your taste a whole new spin Bring your friends and come on in Take your taste to a different place It's the taste of And folks, welcome back. And once again, we're doing our show tonight at uh, uh, Andrew Sports Medicine. And uh, always uh, look forward to visiting with the gentleman sitting next to me, uh, Dr. Jeff Dugas. And, and Coach, we, I can almost say Coach because uh, you've uh, worked on Buddy Anderson's staff. I think you're still <laughs> the team doctor for, for the Rebels. Yeah. And uh, always good to see you. And we, we love to talk with you, Jeff, and, and the doctors to – to let people know what is going on with Andrew Sports Medicine and what kind of services y'all provide and what you do. And uh, more or less, though, to get the interview started off, we want to find about out what's going on with you. I know changes happen in your life just like everybody else's. So sort of bring us up to date with what Jeff Dugas is doing right now. Well, first, it's great to see you, Snapper, and I appreciate you being here. It's always great to see you and spend time with you. Um, you know, it's, it's getting to be spring, which means it's not football season. Uh, which means our lives are a little bit easier around here from a from a work standpoint. We get a little bit more time off, and we get to spend a little bit more time with families. I, I want to say I made it to every one of my son Chris's baseball games this season, 
for his senior year, and um, I, it took some wrangling and it took my amazing staff to make that happen, but they made it happen, and uh, we, I made it to every game. And uh, very interestingly, today he got an offer to play college baseball from, uh, from Barry College, so we'll have to see what he decides to do. But um, it's been a great time spending time with him and, and Caroline and Tracy. So uh, that's over. We unfortunately lost at Huntsville last week. Huntsville... They've really got some good pitching, so it's going to be very interesting to see how that progresses. And, uh, you know, all four of the Birmingham area teams lost, except for Trustful, even though they play in the North Division. Right. They, they uh, All four Birmingham teams lost in the first round of the playoffs, which was uh, tells you something about the pitching that they got up there in the North Region. As a matter of fact, and you may be aware of this, you may not, Hewitt will come back to the Birmingham region next year. Yes, that's yeah. right. And I don't so. know who's going north. Do we know who's going north? No, it's a it's a it's another Undecided. team. I don't know if it's uh, Gadsden or, yeah. or somewhere like who that. Or they've be. had a team move up from 6A due oh, to okay, population right. yeah. that would get them up to 7A. Oh, another sidebar, talking about your son, <coughs> uh, Chris. Uh, lucky enough to have him and, and a lot of his uh, teammates on the show uh, a they couple enjoyed of weeks that. ago, and and so that was fun, and uh, uh, and it's awful good news to hear that he's going to get a shot, maybe to play college baseball. Yeah, we'll see what he decides. Uh, I'm excited for him. He was excited today coming back, and uh, he had a couple of teams interested, but he really liked it there, and uh, he's going to have to decide between that and going to the University of Georgia and and trying to walk on if he wants to, but. Um, we'll see. I think he's got some good options, and I'm, I'm proud of him. Well, now, I know um, we, we're, we're going to talk business, folks, but you, you can reminisce a little bit and talk about the kids. That's a, a big part of it, too. And, but, but, Jeff, as we get into the business part of it, what, what is new? What's going on? I know the one thing that, that you and I have talked about before on uh, other occasions we've been together, and, and this is one thing. Uh, there are a whole lot of changes that happen in the medical field, but the one thing that um, I, I always come back to and I always like to get your perspective on it is a lot of the kids' injuries um, in, in high school in particular come from overuse in some of the sports, pitching being mm -hmm. one of the main ones. And because I'm always um, interested in what you've got to say about it because we've tried to, in recent shows, sort of steer the, the kids in a different direction that might help them. But uh, has that changed much or is still overuse one of the biggest problems we have with young athletes? Well, obviously the highest risk sports for injury are the contact sports. You know, football will outpace, you know, most sports in injury just because of the nature of the sport. But the overuse sports, things like baseball and softball and tennis and things like that, those things have not really changed. And baseball in particular, because we live in a warm climate and we can throw, you know, 11 to 12 months a year, we have to be almost more careful of that than, than other places. What we see a lot, though, is not so much that people aren't following the rules. We have pitch counts that we've now, this is our second season in Alabama with the Alabama High School Athletic Association pitch counts, which has been a very favorable thing, and the response rate from the coaches is very favorable. In fact, a bunch of states around the country used Alabama as a model for how to do their own pitch counts because the National Federation of High Schools mandated it. So we were kind of a model for around the country. I think some of the bigger issues are we're seeing kids getting hurt in the weight room, not so much that they're having an injury while lifting a weight, but in some of these sports that are not bulk requiring sports, we're seeing kids that are doing a lot of heavy Olympic style lifting and then trying to be finesse athletes an hour later. So as an example, you can't be bench pressing and then an hour later go out and try to throw a baseball. Those are competing exercises in terms of what you're trying to accomplish. Baseball requires longevity and, and laxity, you know, long and loose, we say, to throw a baseball well, whereas bench pressing and military pressing and doing deadlifts and power cleans, those are, those are bulk building exercises that are not long and loose. Those are short and tight. So we can't have our kids working out for football in the, in the middle of the day or in the morning and then going and trying to be a baseball player in the afternoon. We have to divest those two things, even though the football coach wants them doing one thing and the baseball coach wants them doing another. So we really have to work on getting those two things separate. 
What, what are, are some of the situations that may be changing or developing in different areas here at Andrews Sports Medicine that makes um, y'all a better alternative than, say, five years ago? Well, we've got a lot of different processes in place in terms of diagnostic ability. Our six non-surgical doctors that are spread out between this facility here downtown at St. Vincent's as well as on four facilities kind of surrounding the Birmingham area make access a lot easier, first of all. So we've got access to our practice on kind of a wheels on the, spokes on the wheel format around downtown. So for the people that don't want to drive downtown, and I drive down here every day, there are days where I don't like driving downtown. I don't blame them, so they can go to one of the peripheral clinics. We've also got um, a lot of biologic things happening. There's a lot of less invasive surgical option things happening. On the UCL injury, the Tommy John front, we've been kind of the pioneers of a new procedure that in many cases is, is a better option for younger athletes, especially the high school level athletes, for things like Tommy John injury. So we're seeing a, an uptick in that. We're having people flying in from all over the country to take advantage of that technology here in Birmingham. Well, let me ask you this. Uh, talking about that technology, uh, it's, it's my understanding, you can correct me if I'm wrong, and please do, that the recovery period uh, of what y'all are doing with Tommy John and, and injuries that um, aren't so um, bad, so severe, that you've got a new technique that where you're cutting the, the uh, recovery time almost in half, right? So the average recovery time from standard Tommy John surgery back to competition is around the 12-month point. It's higher at the major league level, but about 12 months at the high school and collegiate level. <clears throat> the newer procedure, which is called a ulnar collateral ligament repair with internal brace, is about half of that. We've seen people get back at an average of about six months. What that speaks to is not that it's a, it's, it is a less invasive operation, but it's also for lesser pathology. So it's for lower level injuries, which you right. typically see in younger athletes. So in the high school and collegiate athletes, and we've, made, we've done this operation all the way up to the major league level, for lesser pathology, this is a better option with a shorter recovery. Well, I was going to say, to me, it sounds like the best option for the simple reason you don't miss a season. You don't have to miss a right, season. Right, exactly. And, and, um, and that's been one of the big benefits. The success rate has been excellent. Uh, we just submitted a paper for publication that showed that the success rate was 94% of getting athletes back to the same or higher level of play which is about 10% higher than standard Tommy John surgery. That's not to say it's a better operation, but it's for lesser pathology. So what we're getting asked a lot is, am I a candidate for that based on the pathology that I have? And a lot of times the answer is yes. And so we've been able to do that operation. We've done about somewhere between 250 and 260 of those procedures over the last few years. And the success rate continues to, to climb. And as we get near the, the end of um, uh, our little segment on the show, one thing I would like to ask you too, because it seems like it's happening, I'm seeing more and more of them, is satellite uh, uh, right. places where people can go and not, like you said, not have to come down here. That's growing, right? It is. And it's important that people have access to care. You know, obviously, we're, we're not, and, and the surgeons aren't going out, but the primary care sports medicine docs who are all incredibly talented non-surgical orthopedists are the ones out there in those, in those peripheral clinics. But they also work downtown in the main office, so they're not just out there alone. Right. They work here and they work so closely with us that the communication is constant and, and they're fantastic sports medicine docs. And folks, what, what we're gonna be doing tonight, and we'll start this with the next segment, uh, Dr. Dugas and I will be uh, talking with three doctors here from Andrew Sports Medicine, and we look forward to talking about them and what they're doing in their lives with the technology that they have. We'll take a quick break. When we come back, another doctor to visit with us. Thank you. The next time you need electrical work, whether it be commercial or residential, you need to call Huffman Electrical Contractors. A company that's been in business for over 35 years, they've served clients not only locally in the Birmingham area and all over the state, but have clients outside the state of Alabama as well. Whether it's a new building or remodeling an older building or home, they can handle the job for you. Once again, that's Huffman Electrical Contractors. The number to call is 205-661-5005. That's 205-661-5005, where at Huffman Electrical Contractors, a satisfied customer is always their number one objective. 
At Andrew Sports Medicine, we partner with our patients, trying to help them overcome the obstacles that keep them from achieving their goals. This practice aggressively pursues victory over injury, over pain, over limitation, over, over anything that's gonna keep you from being the best you can be. It starts with our non-surgical physicians who are trained in sports medicine and orthopedic injuries. Uh, we have specialists in sports medicine with shoulders, elbows, and knees. We have hip specialists that do uh, only hip surgery, including arthroscopy, minimally invasive resurfacing, and total hip replacement if needed. We have joint replacement surgeons. We have spine surgeons. We have surgeons that specialize in foot and ankle surgery and in hand surgery. So just about all the specialties of orthopedics are covered in injury sports medicine. What makes the great surgeons great is their volume of experience at making decisions, whether that's intraoperative decisions, post-operative decisions, pre-operative decisions, the decision to operate on somebody or not operate on them. And so our volume here breeds good decision making that gives us an edge in terms of making decisions for our patients, which ultimately is a lot of times the difference between success and failure. The teams, the players, the parents, have confidence in us because they know we're gonna communicate with them, we're gonna create a plan unique to that athlete or that person, and we're gonna get them back to their, their thing and as quickly and as safely as we can. At Andrew Sports Medicine, our mission is to partner with our patients and to help them succeed and, and achieve victory. Whether you're a weekend warrior, a grandparent with a shoulder problem, or a professional athlete, you get the same care, the same high-level technology, the same uh, aggressiveness that we would in a professional athlete and we, we treat everyone the same way. None of us like to lose, we're all very competitive and we're not going to lose against their illness or their injury. The community features a world-class resort and spa. The amazing Robert Trent Jones Trail Golf Course. Miles of historic trails. And the whole family loves the pool at Ross Park. Now, are we gonna have to watch your vacation slides all night? This was supposed to be a party. Well, this isn't my vacation. I live here. Ooh. And folks, welcome back in detail. We've got an extra gentleman sitting up here with us in this segment, and then along with uh, Jeff and I, Dr. Christopher Carter. Uh, first of all, uh, Dr. Carter, the first thing I would like to ask you is tell me a little bit about your background and how you have ended up here at Andrews. So I'm originally from Dallas, Texas. I came to Alabama where I did undergraduate. Then I went to Nashville where I did medical school and residency. I uh, came down here in 2013 and 14 to do my sports, sports medicine fellowship and enjoyed the year. It was a great year. I went off and worked for another orthopedic group for a couple years and then I was able to come back here a few months ago. I know the one thing that, that stands out to, in my mind, and I'll let you explain exactly what that is. Of course, I see here where born in Dallas and a ball boy for the Mavericks, so yeah. you've got a little uh, sports background there with you. But talk a little bit about, for people that might not be exactly sure what this uh, relates to, and your non-surgical um, job. Yes, yeah, so sports medicine is essentially non-surgical orthopedics. Uh, the vast majority of orthopedics doesn't necessarily require surgery. Looking at overuse injuries, arthritis, tendonitis, um, sprains, strains, things like that. So we're here to take care of those kind of injuries. And then when we can't handle it or if we need a surgical consultation, then we have uh, partners here like Dr. Dugas that, that we can ask for help and, and see if they have a little more intervention that will help the patients out. And even a lot of fractures and things, you mm -hmm. know, th those don't all need surgery. So yeah. the, the primary care docs, the, the non-surgical sports docs are Number one, they're a faster way to get into the office so they allow us to be better customer service to the patient because they, we can get them on their schedules quicker so we can get them in. and They know the same stuff we do. If they need an MRI or something, they can get that going. Yeah, exactly. And, and uh, too, Doctor, what was it about uh, that led you here in particular to the Andrews Group as compared to heading some in other direction? I mean, this name is just kind of world-renowned, especially the nation, you know, it's, you see it on ESPN all the time. We, we have great surgeons here, a great facility. And so just going into sports medicine growing up, I was like, you know, that'd be a great group to work with. And then luckily had the, the good opportunity to uh, get a position here and train under here and then come back here as an attending as well. So, don't, yes. Don't let them fool you. You don't get to do this fellowship by being average. You get to do this fellowship by being exceptional. Yeah. And Chris <laughs> is exceptional. So. I'll put it out there that you don't get to just do this. Not everybody gets that opportunity. And I don't make those choices, but 
Chris is exceptional. That's how you ended up I appreciate up here. that. Thank <laughs> you very much. Well, Dr. Carter, has it surprised you in your practice? Uh, I, I know uh, being a guy and, and um, being in athletics, you expect a lot of uh, male uh, patients, but I guarantee you've got a lot of young ladies in, in athletics now, and so yeah. treating those non-surgical uh, injuries, that, that's probably a, a great challenge, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. We get a great mix of everyone, male, female, young and old. I mean, it's just not, not just the athletes in high school and college. We also see middle school cheerleaders all the way up to 70-year-old grandmas with knee arthritis. So we see a wide scope of people, and luckily we're able to take great care and give everyone the same exceptional care here, whether they're athletes or non-athletes. Now, now, this may be a dumb question because I've been known to ask dumb ones before, but uh, and it intrigues me a little bit. Non-surgical, do you work for the day that you will be a, a surgeon? Or no, how does that work? I'm fine where I am. I, okay. I did this specialty, and I enjoy working in clinic every day, and then, you know, I allow Dr. Dukas and the surgeons to handle surgery. So we each have our own little niche, and we just kind of work together well. Doing that. Out of our six non-surgical docs, um, two of them are family practice, two are internal medicine, one is PM&R, and one's pediatrics. So we have a, a broad spectrum of, of backgrounds before they did the sports medicine fellowship, which is important because they don't all have the same knowledge base coming in, and they, you know, there are things that that Chris has in his background that make him unique than the other five, and so we know how to get patients to them for their pre-sports medicine knowledge as well as their sports medicine knowledge. When uh, now growing up, were you, I, I take it for granted because you look like you'd have been one, you were, were you an athlete? Definitely. I played basketball, football, baseball, track, soccer. I kind of did a little bit of everything. So yeah, I try to, I enjoyed sports. And so uh, what was it that headed you being um, an athletic, having that athletic background, what headed you toward the medical profession? Uh, you know, I just think athletes in general are a motivated population. They want to get better and they're, they're very compliant. They're a healthy group and they want to not be in pain. So they come and they, they follow your instructions and, and do what they got to do so they get back to being pain free and getting back in the sports field. We're talking about that getting pain free and everything. Uh, Male and female, what are, what are the, if this stands out any, what are the most um, injury-related uh, uh, incidents that are going on with them that bring them to you? It's all over the place. It depends on if they're playing football and spraining their ankle or tear the ACL or if they're a weekend warrior and they have a little tendonitis in their Achilles or, you know, it's just, it really is, it depends on if it's rotator cuff or knee arthritis. Like I said, if you fall and fracture yourself, um, yes, yeah, it's, it's a number of different injuries that we see. Are, concussion are you, management as well. We do concussions. Are you, are you one of these guys, and uh, and I'll take you out of the doctor's sitting for just a second. Are you one of these guys that, that are, for athletes competing in all sports, or hewing in on one and trying to be the best you can be at it? I'd like to be the best I can be at everything, to be honest. But, you know, we, we're on the sidelines for most of the football games, but we take care of all athletes, whether it's, again, basketball, baseball. We, we cover all different sports here. You know, we talked about the spokes on the wheel, you know, with the non-surgical docs. So Chris's practice, in addition to being one or two days here in the, in the main office in St. Vincent's, he's three or four days a week in the trustful office. Mm -hmm. And then he also covers Clay Chalkville High School for football. So he's working with Trustful High School. He's working with Clay Chalkville High School. He's working with, and, and Trustful area, that whole area is one of the fastest growing in the state. It's a very active community with a lot of good sports at the high school level and, and beyond and below. So his practice has really expanded quickly in that vibrant athletic market. And working with Clay Chalkwell, which is a fantastic football program and, and, and athletic school as well. So um, Chris is kind of jockeying between downtown Birmingham and, and the northeast portion of the city. and. Uh, and, and so that's a very vibrant and fast-growing part. He's, he's got a very athletic practice, which mm -hmm. goes along with his background. Yeah, definitely. And, and I guarantee you, uh, I, I was an athlete, believe it or not, but it was 50 years <laughs> ago now. But uh, uh, when an athlete, no matter whether male or female, comes to you, I imagine the best thing they can hear is you can help me without me having to go under the knife. Yeah, people it, definitely love to hear that. Here, try and get it done conservative management and not necessarily have to have any kind of invasive procedure. So we try our, hard, our, try our hardest to do that and 
sometimes we're successful and sometimes we have to ask for help. Do, do you get athletes um, more from one sport than the other or the, is it just all over the uh, all over the arena? Yeah, it's all over the place. It depends on the season and it depends on where you're living and what time of year. Um, I have two daughters and they're involved in gymnastics and swimming and ballet and things like that. So I see a lot of their the, the people that they're doing gymnastics and ballet and swimming with just because they know my face from around there and they hear that I'm a physician. So yeah, it's just really, we see a, a broad, broad a range of, uh, of injuries and different athletes. But did you like the fact of uh, going into the, the positions um, uh, for, for your uh, occupation, did you like the fact that the best thing you can do, the best news you can give a young athlete, we can fix that without surgery? Yeah, definitely. It's always good to get to deliver good news. So. There's a lot of things that you do not need to have fixed. And, um, and we really pride ourselves on not being the jump to the knife type of people. Our practice is busy enough that we don't have to do that. And we, we want what's best. We want the patients to get better. We do better when our patients get better. And I tell people all the time, I'm a surgeon. If you can avoid me, you should avoid me like the plague. When, you know, uh, Jeff, talking about that, uh, are you one of these guys that if a guy participates in three sports, has he got a, a lot lesser opportunity of, uh, unless it, there's an injury, um, of not hurting himself? Overuse we talked about just a moment ago. Is that, this competing in two or three sports a good way to avoid that? It is at a certain level. You know, when you get to the high school level, especially the larger high school level where the seasons are going to overlap, you can run into some problems with trying to play three sports. It's tough to be basketball, football, baseball at a 7A high school in Alabama because they overlap so much that it's just not really, it's almost impossible to be good at all three. So you're going to have a rare athlete that can do that. But we applaud the people that try to do it. And at the youth level, yeah, you should play as many sports as you can. But at some level, the specialization does occur and it's more of a necessity to be competitive with the kids around you. So it's rare to see somebody really be competitive in three sports at the 7A level. That's, that's almost tough to see. Well, like I was saying, Dr. Carter, the time gets away from us. And uh, first of all, it's good to meet you, good to have you uh, sit in with us. But the one thing that I hope for you down the road is that your career goes in the way that you want it to, a continued success for you. Thank okay. you very much. Thank you for having me. We'll take a quick break. we come back. Another doctor will sit in with us. Don't you go away. We'll be right back. And this will be your premium right here. Sorry to interrupt. I just want to say I combined home and auto with State Farm. Saved 760 bucks. Love this guy. Okay. Does it bother anybody else that the mime is talking? Freaky. Bundle home and auto, and you could save 760 bucks. That's 760 very good reasons to call Alan Gurdow in Trustville today. Thank you for sitting in on the second segment with uh, uh, Dr. Dugas and I, Dr. Michael Ryan, and... Uh, uh, doctor, nice to meet you. Uh, one thing when I look at your bio a little bit, one thing really stands out to me, how does a guy from Notre Dame make it down here in Alabama? That's a good question. I think it <laughs> offer up to one of our other partners, Lyle Kane, that probably wouldn't have been the case uh, as a big Alabama fan, but uh, I think I snuck through. And, and uh, once again, um, this is a, a surgeon, and I think you um, knee hip replacement. Correct. There's a lot that you work into. What, what is it in your background? What led you... To, I, don't, I know most doctors, and, and I could be 100% wrong on this, but most doctors probably didn't start out thinking that's what they were going to be. Most, I, I would agree with you. Um, you know, I think for me it, it, it probably kind of manifested when I was a little bit older, probably junior high, early high school. Uh, but I knew pretty quickly that what I'm doing today is exactly what I wanted to do at that age. And I think part of that was crafted by the fact that I always grew up loving science. I always lo loved sports growing up, played a lot of different sports, and the, the combination of the two, I knew I wasn't going to be a professional athlete, it wasn't that good, but uh, yeah. I think the combination of the two led me to uh, doing this. I don't know, man. He can hit a golf ball, <laughs> let me tell you. Now, I want to say, he's not just knee and hip replacement. Mike did the sports medicine fellowship, so he's a sports doc, 
but he does knee and hip replacement. He's really taken an interest in some specific hip problems. So to go along with our hip arthroplasty stuff, which he does in Benton Emblem, our hip arthroscopist, which Mike also does, Mike's kind of decided that he wants to be kind of the hip guru and the hip specialist. So Mike is really building a hip practice in addition to doing the knee stuff. But his sports medicine background makes it where he's really going to have a younger population of hip problems, not necessarily the, the older population. And he doesn't mind doing that, but, and he's good at it. But he's really going to focus on the younger, the younger hip disease. And I'm, I'm Correct. speaking for you, but yeah. I mean, that's really kind of what he wants to do. Correct. Well, see, that's, that's the one thing that I was wondering about just a moment ago. You say your athletic background. Yes. And of course, uh, a lot of us can, can grow up and look back and say, I was just good enough not to be good enough. So then, once you finally figured that out, then it's when you head in another direction. What was it that headed you in the medical direction? You know, I think um, one of the defining moments was, it was actually the 2001 National Championship between Ohio State and Miami. Uh, and when Willis McGahee took that hit and destroyed his knee, that was a pretty severe injury. And no one ever thought he would come back to play in the NFL, let alone have a normal life. And six months later, he's squatting, you know, 400 pounds and getting ready for the combine. And I just thought it was so impressive that there was someone out there who could reconstruct someone's knee to allow them to get back to that level. And so that was kind of the idea in my mind of being able to be someone who had that capacity to help somebody get back. And then over time it developed to, yes, I would love to take care of athletes, but I think there's the other rewarding part about that is, is the weekend warrior or you know, the grandpa who just wants to pick up his grandson who's got a rotator cuff tear. The ability to give people back function became the ultimate goal for me. Now, uh, originally, where are you from? It's from the north, right? Not quite. I called the mountains. Where? Colorado Springs, Colorado. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. out west. Yes. Yeah, so I was going to say, how in the world did you get to, <laughs> to Alabama? But having said that and what you're doing and where you're at, th that's almost uh, explainable, really. Yes. If, if you want to be uh, the best or affiliated with the best, you go where they are. Correct. Uh, Andrew Sports Medicine has a reputation that's second to none. I completely uh, agree. None. And so that, that yeah. was a, an outstanding uh, decision that you made. So how long, um, how early did you realize, I like the idea of taking care of people in a different way? You know, I think, like I said, initially it was developed with the sports idea and this glorified idea of taking care of a sports team. And I think the more I learned about orthopedics and in particular sports medicine aspect, um, and that was probably more as I got into medical school and spent some time with some really good doctors um, you know, from my home state. And there's another really good uh, practice that's very similar to the way we have things set up here. Um, and I spent some time with those guys. And they were not only just phenomenal surgeons, but they were phenomenal clinicians and diagnosticians. And you could tell that their patients really had a good understanding of what they were trying to accomplish by treating their injuries. And so I think that's where that developed, is that idea of being able to restore function not just to athletes, but to everyone. And that was, for me, kind of a realization. That's why I wanted to be in this field. Well, let me ask you this, uh, from this angle of it, is uh, every once in a while I wake up and I see all the technology around me, and I think they can't do nothing else. You can't invent something else. And they always can. Uh, that's what amazes me. And then having to mirror that into the medical industry. Right. It's, it's just like a person such as yourself that want to go further than anybody else is right. gone. It's, it's amazing how strides are made right. every day in the medical. Does that surprise you at all? Um, to an extent, yes, but I also think that that's, that's where the value of what I would consider expertise comes in. When you have you know, partners like Dr. Dugas, Dr. Kane, Dr. Emblem, and, and everyone else here at Andrews, I think they're so good at what they do because we do so much of it, that subtle nuances that other doctors who don't do as much miss allow you to lead to ideas such as the internal brace where it, the questions come up in your mind do we need to do a reconstruction on every Tommy John injury well the question is has been answered and I think that no it's it's not and it's a case-by-case -case basis and so I think that with that level of expertise you gain a really good understanding of which patients need which procedures in every specific indication so you know volume is the solution to that quiz the answer to that question when you do high volume you learn the nuances, you learn the intricacies, and it makes you better able to craft technological changes. When we came up with the internal brace idea for the elbow, we took some technology that was out there and revamped it a little bit to fit that need. Mike is gonna have a high volume young hip practice, which is an area that very much needs 
some technological advances. You know, we may still be doing things that were done 40 years ago and it may work well, but Mike's the kind of person that over his career is going to do so much volume in that area that he's going to have the opportunity to change the game a little bit as he gets that volume under his belt. But he's one of those leaders that he has the leadership skills personally, professionally, the surgical skills, the background. I mean, he's got a degree from Notre Dame, which, you know, got to say is pretty skippy. <laughs> Trained at a great place in New York, came here for a year. And, and so he's going to be one of those people that is going to change the game down the road as his experience grows. Well, uh, Jeff, I'll, I'll ask you this too as well. Does Is that sort of the nature of a doctor in, 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 his back, in the back of his mind there's got to be a better way we can do this. Or you're always looking for the for the next big change that's going to help somebody that's never been there before. You know, I think that's the nature of the physicians we have in this practice. I don't think that that's the nature of all physicians. And I don't think it's a bad thing. We, we need physicians that just want to treat patients and, and show up every day and do their job and go home. We, the country needs that. The, you know, the primary care world needs that. The orthopedic surgery world needs that. And there are people that are just good technicians and good surgeons that don't get into technology advancement or research. Or, and, and there's nothing wrong with that. And they're perfectly good doctors and great surgeons. But in this practice, we need the people that are going to advance the science. That's the nature of this practice. And so when we hire somebody like Mike, we're looking for the people that want that as part of their life. They want to advance the science of what we do. And Mike certainly does. And uh, Dr. Ryan, without putting you on the spot, uh, because that's not my intention at all, but it sounds like that you found a place to where you think you're going to be content a while. Now, having said that, that doesn't mean that somewhere down the road you might feel a calling to go somewhere else to do something that hadn't been done anymore. But I guess what I'm asking is right now, you sound like from listening to you a little bit that, that you're where you're supposed to be right now. I completely agree with that, yeah. You know, I think that... Um, my wife is also from the West Coast, she's from California, and we interviewed at jobs in both our hometowns, and they were very good practices with great people. Um, and my wife was the one who really identified the missing factor in both those places, and it was really um, a mentor. And, and having somebody who's been there, who set up a practice, like Jeff Dugas and Lyle Kane uh, and Benton Emblem, to show you the way about how to continue to be a really good surgeon and a good physician um, and continue to develop a practice so that you can help the most amount of people possible. And so that was the factor for us. And so deciding to move to a place that we'd only experienced for a year that was far away from both our families was a big decision, but we absolutely made the right decision. And I think we'll be here for the uh, long-term future. I was gonna say too, it sounds like me, you, and maybe your wife as well, are the, are the kind that embrace that challenge. Yes. You're, you're looking to go somewhere where people are gonna bring out in you something that you didn't even know existed. Absolutely. For lack of a better way to put it. Absolutely. Is, is that halfway right? I'd say you got it right on the nail, right on the head, Snapper. That's pretty good. That's that exactly what we want. Well, I tell you what, it, it sounds like that, that right now you're at a, a place where you're supposed to be, and the sky's the limit, it sounds like. So I wish you all the luck in the world. And I got a feeling that uh, uh, persons such as Dr. Dugas hope you find a lot of your answers right here and don't want you looking somewhere. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure we will. We have but, all the, no all the necessary but, means but to do that. But awfully good so. to meet you and you see well. you and good luck and Great. whatever lies ahead for you and your family. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Okay, folks, we'll take a quick break. We'll come back and we'll visit with another doctor. Uh, you never can tell what's going to be said, so don't you go away. We'll be right back. The community features a world-class resort and spa, the amazing Robert Trent Jones Trail Golf Course, miles of historic trails, and the whole family loves the pool at Ross Park. Now, are we gonna have to watch your vacation slides all night? This was supposed to be a party. Well, this isn't my vacation. I live here. Ooh. 
The next time you need electrical work, whether it be commercial or residential, you need to call Huffman Electrical Contractors. A company that's been in business for over 35 years, they've served clients not only locally in the Birmingham area and all over the state, but have clients outside the state of Alabama as well. Whether it's a new building or remodeling an older building or home, they can handle the job for you. Once again, that's Huffman Electrical Contractors. The number to call is 205-661-5005. That's 205-661-5005, where at Huffman Electrical Contractors, a satisfied customer is always their number one objective. Folks, welcome back. As you see, we've got our third visitor setting up here with us. And uh, uh, Dr. J, will you pronounce your name, please? Sure, Dr. J. Umarvadia. Just like it, as, as Jeff would say, snappers, just like it's um, said there, but <laughs> I would have said uh, Marbadia, so it's Badia. Umarvadia. So, but, it, but you could have probably said, thought it was if you didn't know. But first of all, awfully good to have you in with us. Um, Thank you for like having me. Like I said, I've heard a little bit about you because of my grandson that was up there at Gardendale. So, and my and his uh, dad, my son, is also in the medical business, and he's talked to me a little bit about you. And so everything's good. been good. I Great. would say that. I'm happy to hear that. And uh, so, uh, what I will ask you as we start this interview off, what uh, is your background and what has led you here to Andrew Sports Medicine? Sure. Uh, I so I grew up. I was born and raised in uh, Greater Philadelphia. Um, went to North Penn High School, went to Penn State undergrad, so I'm a big Penn State fan. Um, I did my residency at LSU in New Orleans, um, you know, rotated around Bogalusa, Baton Rouge, and uh, New Orleans, but, uh, and then I led, led me to here, did my fellowship here in sports medicine. Uh, I should mention that my uh, primary training or primary residency is in family medicine, so I became very interested in sports medicine early on as sports medicine is an early uh, part of the curriculum. I started a program there um, called the Bogalusa Sports Medicine Initiative, where we went out to the high schools, did sideline coverage, and did physicals for about three high schools there. Um, when there was no sports medicine there at all, I sort of started it uh, from the ground up, and it's still continuing. They pretty much have five high schools now, um, and they're, they're continuing the tradition that uh, um, we started back uh, about four or five years ago, and then led me to my fellowship here in uh, uh, Dr. Dugas and Dr. Kane, uh, under their tutelage, uh, they decided to keep me on. And well, happy here, to here's the thing that, that I, I don't totally understand, and then Jeff probably says, Snapper, you're a complete nut <laughs> for wondering this, but the non-surgical, that's, that's what I wonder about. When I'm talking to, with doctors, and I don't mean this in a negative way, I'm usually dealing with guys that's surgeons, but I'm, I'm finding out quickly that non-surgical is that's the way anybody would want to go if they could avoid surgery they would all come to you so what what led you in, to get into this field in particular absolutely i think uh, the patients in sports medicine have a different type of field they have a, a knack to get back into doing what they love to do whether it's playing sports at the high school level whether it's playing uh, collegiate or professional uh, athletes or there's the weekend warrior who likes to run marathons on weekends or uh, likes to garden on weekends they all need uh, musculoskeletal care so at the end of the day, we like to sort of get people back to where they, what they love to do, whether it's athletics uh, or, or uh, things that they like to enjoy on the weekends uh, or on ev in evenings in their spare time. Well, and let's face it, the best news any of us could hear when we go to a doctor, have a problem, we can fix this non-surgically. That's the best thing we could ever hear. That's right. And so I, I guess I'm learning to appreciate when they say non-surgical, it's not that you don't know what you're doing, it's just that they've got an option to where maybe we can fix you without that, and so what, that would be the best news somebody could hear. Not just work it, not just treat it non-surgically, but sometimes it's work it up so we can get you to the surgeon faster. So a lot of times when people call, if my schedule is full, Jay can work them up and get them set and say, hey, look, you got a torn this or that. that. That needs surgery. Well, that's a lot faster a path into me than calling my office and my next appointment is a month from now. Right. So they might call Jay and he can see them this week and they're on the surgery schedule next week if they need to be. So sometimes it's actually a faster conduit to surgery. And, and obviously if we can treat them non-surgically, we'd rather do that. So was what, when you were, were growing up a young, young man and uh, going through college, how, how quickly did you learn that medicine was where you wanted to go and not somewhere else? Um, I, I, it's pretty early on. I mean, I, I grew up playing baseball and basketball and uh, got to a point where uh, I wanted to mix the two and I thought, you know, it'd be great to do medicine and be a well-rounded physician, uh, being a family physician. And, you know, I knew uh, my knack for sports and, you know, growing up 
a big sports fan, whether it was you know watching the Eagles or watching the Phillies play, and uh, then I went to Penn State, which which is a big football school. So um, I think it pretty pretty much reinforced my um, love for sports, and I love doing medicine, and getting people back to what they love to do. Well, I was going to say, uh, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, listening to you talk, that. Uh, You've always liked the athletic end of it, but yes. when you saw that that maybe wasn't where you needed to be, then the next thing, the next step was medicine, I, I guess, or in the medical field. And so it's, uh, it's, it's sort of interesting to find what leads one person in and maybe another one not. So, so it, it sounds like you knew pretty early on that, that that was what you wanted to do if you couldn't be in a, a professional sport in some way. Yes, absolutely. I mean, I knew, I mean, I think ninth or 10th grade, I stopped playing, uh, you know, stopped playing travel baseball and I said, all right, I don't think I'm going to get to the next level. So how else can I get to that path? And, uh, you know, it's great. It's very rewarding. I, in fact, I had a patient today saying, uh, I, I, don't, I can't mention enough how, how much you've changed my life. And that sort of touches me and says, gets back to the heart of why I got into it. And so, so Jeff, what, uh, what did y'all see in, in Dr. J that, that, that you feel like that the sky's for lim the limit for him here? So to, to work in this practice, you have to be able to handle high volume. You know, it's, it's first and foremost, you have to communicate well. You have to know what you're doing. That's, I guess that's the most important thing. You gotta be good at it. But you gotta be able to communicate it and you gotta be able to say yes. You gotta be willing to do the work. This is a hard working practice. We don't have people that that don't like to show up for work. We got a bunch of people that like to show up and work hard. Jay is all that. So Jay has great communication skills. He's got a knowledge base that is incredible. So he did the fellowship last year and he was so good with our patients and so good with the teams and the athletes. And, and we had a need that he fit the need. Um, his office is, he, he sees patients here in the downtown office, but he's in Gardendale three or four days a week. Again, another growing community that's north of town. So he catches a catchment area that ranges all the way from Tennessee to, to Birmingham. And so he's our most north partner. Right. And so he catches Huntsville patients, Cullman patients, Gardendale, which is a big community and, and, uh, and a high school and a, and a community, high, high school community that we're, we've worked with for a long time and have a relationship going back, you know, 20 years with. So uh, Jay was a natural fit for that area as well as for what we needed in, a, in another partner in the non-surgical world. So um, obviously it comes from the skill set. He has, he has the tools and, he, and he's doing great. And, and Jay, when it comes to uh, uh, your practice in particular, um, I know you see young male, female athletes. What, is, a, is there one area where you see the injuries coming more from this injury than another or one that sticks out in your mind? Uh, we see a lot of football-related injuries, especially in the fall. Um, it's a busy time. You know, uh, our concussion rates are gone up, and you know we treat concussions. Uh, obviously, we see patients on a week-by-week -week basis. We see them, work them up. If they need further care, we send them to a neuropsychologist if needed. Uh, we haven't had many of those cases, but um, a concussion. You know, we, I like to sort of uh, put it out there and, say, and ask the patient, "What do you know about a concussion?" Because I like to know their baseline of what they think a concussion is. And then we talk about what exactly it is, how they need to get back, whether they need any accommodations for school, accommodations at home, you know, limitations and restrictions on how they get them back safely um, and as best as they can to, to what they uh, enjoy doing, whether it's football or basketball or other sports. Well, is this a true statement or not when it comes to, to non-surgical? Uh, you are looking for options for people. Uh, if, you, if you can avoid the surgery, like you say, uh, Jeff, and you're absolutely right, sometimes it's imminent and the sooner the better. Right. But as the old saying goes, the, the best news then you can give a, a patient is, hey, we can, we can fix you without having to go the surgery route. And so I, I can imagine that's probably the best news you ever give somebody. Absolutely. Uh, yes, I mean, we have fractures. We take care of a lot of, you know, uh, fractures from, on a daily basis, uh, whereas, you know, if they need surgery for certain things, we have the backup. In fact, you know, I can call Dr. Dugas or Dr. Kane or Dr. Emblem and say, hey, can you look at this x-ray for me? You know, uh, I want to make sure that uh, w this can be treated non-operatively and non-surgically. And within a moment's notice, they t let me know, hey, this is, looks good to go. And uh, we, we can cast that up or no, this needs surgery and, and you need to send it my way. Yeah, and I want to point out that the six non-surgical docs that we have, that's not a step down from right. the surgeons. This is not a sec A team, B team thing. 
These guys are completely competent to do exactly what we do, anything that's not in the operating room. So when it comes to seeing patients in the office, there's 18 of us. Yeah, there's 12 surgeons or 13 surgeons and six non-surgical docs, but that's where the difference ends. In terms of seeing us in the office, we're all pretty much the same, and this is definitely not a step down. And wow. In a lot of ways, it's a step up, because a lot of times they have more non-surgical options at their disposal than we do. So in our minds, the perfect model is for every patient to see one of the non-surgical docs and then come to us if they need it. Right. Well, I was going to say, boy, believe me, it, uh, there's no such thing as a B team when it comes no, to No, there's health. no B team. And uh, uh, Dr. J, it's, it's awfully good to meet you. And like I said, I know that uh, my grandkids have had a personal uh, relationship with you a little bit and appreciate everything you've done for them. And uh, uh, Jeff, of course, it's always good to see you and, and catch Thanks, up Snapper. with what's going on and everything. And so I'll look forward to the next time. The good Lord willing, there will be an, another time. There but, will. Uh, Good luck to you, uh, continued success, Jeff. And Dr. J, once again, often nice to meet you. Good luck to you. Thank you for having us. Appreciate and it. Folks, we've uh, had another very entertaining uh, evening and, and also informative. And that's what we like when we come up here to St. Vincent's to visit with the doctors. And Dr. Dugas, in particular, uh, has sort of been my right-hand man up here when I come up here, and I appreciate that so much. But uh, hope that uh, you learn some things. And uh, the one thing we hope that you learn more than anything else, if you have any kind of health problem, this is the place to come. These are the doctors to see. So till next week, uh, and we see you again. You know what the snapper always says. Bye.